Good evening everyone, you're all very welcome. The wee chorus we're going to try and sing tonight is called Thank You Jesus for Loving Me. Thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Lord for loving me. Thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Lord for loving me. Heroes of Christ. So we do give you a very warm welcome and we thank you for joining with us tonight. And we trust as we gather together, uh, we know very much uh, the Lord's hand upon us. Uh, we know he's leading both uh, around his word and also uh, in prayer uh, together as well. We do thank everyone who tunes in regularly and faithfully uh, to the Bible studies. And we trust that these times of opening up God's word uh, will certainly be a help and a blessing and a challenge to your own heart and to uh, your own life, especially in these days when we can't meet together, and especially in these days when we're not able to fellowship together or um, in many ways have a time of prayer together. I suppose, as I've said, and you've heard me saying on other occasions, uh, one of the greatest things that I do miss is the Bible study and the prayer meeting, when we've been able to meet together around God's word and where we've been able to meet together uh, in prayer. So we're looking forward to that uh, opening up again in the near uh, future. So we thank everyone for tuning in. As you know, just the announcements again for tonight. On a Thursday night, quarter past eight, it'll be our prayer meeting and our Bible study. And I trust uh, tonight afresh, you'll realize that prayer is the key and prayer is the real answer. And we certainly need much prayer in these days. So Thursdays, uh, quarter past eight for our prayer meeting and Bible study. And then Sunday uh, morning, uh, God willing, at 11.30 there for uh, the Sunday morning service. And that will be on Facebook and YouTube. Now, Easter Sunday morning uh, is not far away now. Uh, so please do remember that. You'll know that's the 4th of April. And we're planning to have a drive-in service uh, here uh, in the church car park. We're hoping to put uh, a little platform up uh, just at the man's door and then uh, park everyone in around and we trust that we'll be able to have a time of fellowship and together uh, we'll be able to see one another we might be able to get out and talk like usual uh, but we'll be able to wave across and we'll be able to see one another and everybody's very welcome to that and we trust we'll have a good time on Easter Sunday morning we know that that's one of the main uh, parts of the calendar of the church when we remember that he's not here and that he is risen and uh, tremendous Easter Sunday morning. So that'll be in the church karmic and that's at 11.30, our usual time for uh, the Sunday uh, morning service. So please do remember that. Remember that very much in your prayers 
and uh, remember that with your presence as well. Come along, sit in the car. Uh, we'll be able to put it right in uh, to the car radio on a certain. We'll give you the the what to, to tune into and how to put it on and all the rest. So uh, please do remember that. It's very very much in prayer and come along and we'll have a time of fellowship together on that Easter uh, Sunday uh, morning. Now that's all the announcements for the coming week and uh, as I say if anybody does need anything may I just reiterate again tonight please do call please do let me know if I can help in any way I will endeavour to do that uh, in these days if you do need prayer and you do want it mentioned uh, contact me let me know uh, and I will uh, say out I suppose it's always the difficulty when you're saying out <coughs> you know that it, it's going online and it's open to everyone so I find it difficult sometimes to mention names or mention people or mention situations but if anybody does want anything uh, brought before the Lord here on the Thursday night please do let me know I will uh, be happy to do that for you and uh, to let it know as long as you have permission uh, to do that so please do remember that if anybody does need anything please do let me know and I'll be glad to help now folks we're going to come together for prayer before we read God's word and before we spend the time around God's word together so let's pray our loving and our gracious heavenly father we just want to thank you uh, again tonight that we can gather here for study and for prayer we do thank you for these nights when we've been able to meet together uh, we thank you for these times when we know that that others are with us and we're united and we're together not only in the place uh, meeting around the word but also in prayer together we do thank you that you're here with us you tell us where the twos or threes gather together you're there and you're in the very midst and we know we're gathering in a different way than we we usually gather but lord we thank you for your presence and we thank you for your speaking voice and we thank you lord that you're here and that to wonderfully bless so lord may your presence go with us may you lead and guide and direct our time here together we don't want to just go through the motions of of a bible study we don't want to say well we're here we're putting this up for the sake of it but we want people to be blessed we want people to be saved we want people to be drawn closer to yourself we want the, the fire from heaven to fall in these days upon our land so lord we're looking to you and we're earnest here as we meet around your word we're earnest as we come together for prayer as the scripture says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much so lord as we come before you we'll know what it is to be right in your sight we'll know what it is to be walking with you and lord as we come together for prayer uh, uh, lord we'll be like abraham of old we'll be known as your friend we'll be like david who was known as a man after god's own heart <coughs> lord we'll be like elijah who was not for god took him because he walked with god and may the reality of some of these old testament saints come upon our hearts in these days and may we be living a life, Lord, in a wonderful way that will honour and glorify your name. So, Lord, be with us now as we meet around your word. Make, it, make your word a living word. Make it a relevant word. Make it a challenging word to our hearts. Make it a cleansing word, Lord, if our hearts and lives need cleanse. Lord, whatever the situation, whatever the need, we pray, Lord, that through your word you will meet us at the very point of of our need we do thank you for the time we can spend in prayer and lord as we go down to prayer at the end of this time together we pray lord we'll pray through and we pray lord we'll touch your very throne and lord we'll see answers to prayer in the days ahead because we have one in the heavens who is always attentive unto our cry we have one who says before we even ask because you know the very thoughts and intent you know the very cry that comes from our heart before we even ask you will answer so lord you know us inside out upside down lord you know every little thing about us and we pray lord that you'll come and this will be a time of blessing around your word it'll be a time of blessing and prayer together and lord you'll have your own perfect way we're here to give you the praise we're here to give you the honor we're here to give you all of the glory because it's in your lovely name we ask it we ask it in the name of the lord jesus amen amen Folks, if you have uh, your Bibles, which I trust you do, and I know that many of you look at on the phone as well, uh, we're looking tonight at 2 Thessalonians. We're finishing off our little thought in uh, at the end of chapter 2 and also uh, moving up into chapter 3. We've been looking at the truth of 
the word. And that's the wonderful thing that we have to have that firm belief in our heart that God's word is truth from beginning to end. We have to believe that it is God's word and we have to believe that it is truth and that we can stand upon that truth. We know that a lie is always dodgy ground, but we know that the, the devil is the father of all lies, but our God is truth. Our God is truth. So let's turn together to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and we're going to read again from verse uh, 13 down to the end and we'll go on in chapter 3 to the end of verse 5 because this really is dealing with the truth and standing upon the truth and the word we're going to look at tonight we looked at the word courageous and, and courage and encouragement and uh, we're going to look uh, tonight at the word establish. Uh, the word comfort was a, a tremendously important word and we looked at seven times it's written in this little portion. Establish or to establish is written in this little portion. I think it's four times but we look at it, at it together. And verse 13 of, of chapter 2 says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which had loved us and had given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from the unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you. That ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts in the love of God and in the patient waiting for Christ. And we'll finish the reading of God's word there at the end of verse 5 together. Now we've already looked and we're just recapping the headings tonight. Uh, but verses 13 and 14 deals with we'd been persuaded in the truth. They believed the truth. And that's the tremendous thing. The beginning was salvation. And they, they built their life and they built their existence on salvation. They believed the truth. Their spirit revealed the truth to them. And they believed that wonderful truth. He called you by our gospel. And the gospel message that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. That's the tremendous message of the gospel. To be persuaded in it. And to know the gospel. And for the gospel to take root in your heart. And for you to be wonderfully saved. Folks we're persuaded in that truth. And folks, I was brought up in that truth. I believe that truth. I have preached that truth. And folks, that's what it means to be persuaded in the truth. Protect the truth in verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. And, and we're to protect the truth. And there is much that comes up against the word of God. And there's many who speak out against the word of God. And many put down the word of God. And many will try to do away with the word of God. But the responsibility of us to Christian is to protect the truth. And because the scripture says the truth shall set you free and that's the reality for for us we looked at the word traditions it's not man-made traditions but it's the traditions that we find in the word biblical traditions what has been handed down from the last generation to us the generation before to the last generation and it's our responsibility to hand it down to the next generation folks we don't want to drop the baton we want to hold on to it. And one, the two of the words we took out of this was stand fast. It's do not move away from the truth of the gospel, but stand, stand upon it and don't move away from it. And then the second word we looked at, verse 15, was the word to hold. It means to hold fast 
or to hold firm. So we stand upon it. We hold fast. We stand firm in it. That strength and might and power. And the reality for us, folks, is that we protect the truth. Now, as we, we moved on there last week, we looked at the first part of, of simply practicing the truth in verses uh, 16 and 17 were, were to practice that truth. It's not only enough to be persuaded in it, it's not only enough to protect it, but, but we need to live that out. And it says, comfort your hearts and establish you. <clears throat> and this is how we practice it, in every good word and in every good work. And the reality for you and me is, is that it's the simply obeying of the Christian life. And we took, we took two, two words and I suppose these words are very, very important. We looked at the first one last week, which was the word comfort. And we looked right throughout the book of, of, of First and Second Thessalonians, sorry, the two books. And we looked at the word comfort. Here in verse 17, it says, comfort your hearts. Uh, and, and that's the wonderful thing, that our hearts will be comforted. And, and folks, the, the ministry here was one of encouragement. And folks, in ministry today, we need to be those who will encourage other believers, who are encouraged in the faith themselves, and then have a ministry of encouragement to others around them. And we looked at a number of little things. I'm not going to go back over that again, but I asked the question at the end, will you have a ministry of encouragement today? And I trust you do. You know, there's much news out now that discourages, isn't there? There's much news to pull us down as to bring us down. But the important thing for you and me is that we are encouraged in the faith. And as we are encouraged in the faith, we will encourage others <clears throat> in the faith. That's what comfort does. It brings encouragement. And Paul's ministry was one of encouragement. But secondly, Paul's ministry for, was one of establishment. And we're going to look at that word establish or that word establish because it means to settle a person. And that's the wonderful thing that God's word and God's work will settle a person. And if we hold on to the word of God, it will always have a settling effect within our hearts and lives. And it's the idea not only to settle a person if they're worked up or upset, to settle them down or to calm them down or to make them look at the bigger picture, but it's to set up a business. It's to set something on a firm foundation so that the business can grow. So the word of establishment here is to settle or to set up. And folks, do we not need to be settled in the word? Do we not need to be set up in the work? Is that not the challenge for us? You know, if it's us, we need to be settled in the word, know the word, and the word will set us free. And then we also need to set up. We need to be set up in the word of God, in the work of God, and to see the work of God going forth. And I want to look at that word establish or establish and four times as far as I could see within these two portions you have the word establish or establish. In 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 2 was the first time I found it. And then it says and send Timothy or Timothy our brother and minister of God and our fellow labour in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. And here we have the two of them there. In other words, it's going to establish you, it's going to settle you, and it's going to encourage you. And that was Timothy's ministry. Paul sent Timothy back to, back to Thessalonica that he might establish them in the faith. And folks, it's important for you and me to be established in the faith. It's important for you and me to be settled in the faith. And folks, without faith, it's impossible to please God, Hebrews 11 said. And if you read through, you see the heroes of faith. Abraham was a man of faith. Jacob was a man of faith. Isaac was a man of faith. Elijah, who we've been looking at there on the Sunday, was a man of faith. And you know, right throughout the Old Testament prophets and into the New Testament prophets, one of the things was faith that they needed. The scripture says in there in Ephesians 2 and verse 8, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. We need faith. Mark eleven twenty two says, Have faith in God. So folks, we need that faith. 
And that was his, that was his one desire, Timothy, to, to, to establish them, to set them up and, and to settle them in the faith. And folks, you and I need to be settled in the faith. We need to know exactly what we believe and we need to stand upon that. Because sometimes people are him and ha and, and they don't really know what they believe. And when you're speaking to certain people they tell you, well, I believe this. But you know, folks, it's easy to get them off their track. I remember Uncle Willie at home. And Uncle Willie, one thing he was good at. Now, I didn't always say he was right. But one thing he was good at, if he believed something, he would make you believe the same. And the truth is the word of God, when we have a firm foundation in the word of God, when we have a real faith, then we can go out and speak to others. And that's what he wanted. He wanted to settle them and he wanted to establish them in the faith. It's important in these days that we be settled and established in the faith. The second one is in, in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13. And it says, to the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. And Paul prayed that God would <coughs> establish or settle their hearts, that they would stand the test of time. And folks, when the tests of time comes, because they will come, that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness. Folks, that there'll be no blame there. That we'll be living a life that is holy. We'll be living a life that is pure. We'll be living a life that is true. That is the great challenge. And what Paul wanted here, he wanted to establish their very hearts. You see, the heart is the seat of the motion. For, for from the heart proceeded evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication. And folks, we can get all those things out. But where they come, it comes from within and defiles the man. You see, if the heart is established in God, then that person is settled. Then that person is set up. That's the reality for Paul here. He wanted to establish their hearts so that they would stand the test of time. Because Paul knew that the test was going to come. In the scriptures it talks about ravening wolves coming in to devour the flock. And folks in Thessalonica there was, there was people coming in and they were going to teach wrong things. In many other churches folks in 1 John you can read of the church there and, and the difficulties that came in from without and from within. And it's the very same today. What does God want? He wants to establish our hearts. Yes, we have a faith and we stand upon it. But yet we ourselves within the heart, from within out of the heart of man. That's the reality. And he wants to establish us in that. The third little thought here is Paul wanted them to be settled in the word and involved in the work of God. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 17 it says comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work in every good word and work he wanted them to be settled in the word and folks may i say the greatest the greatest thing for me as a pastor is to see people having a desire for the word of god because you know people can believe what they like but folks, if it's not in the word of God, it's of no avail. And folks, when you go into a meeting to, to preach, don't think the preacher doesn't know whether some are sleeping. Don't think the preacher doesn't know where some are far away. Don't think the preacher doesn't know that there's some, and folks, they're just sitting on every word. Because folks, the people who are sitting on every word, there's a growth. There is a desire, there's a sincerity, there's a desire for the simple word of God. And folks, you can see growth within the heart and within the life. And that's what Paul wanted here. Paul wanted them to be settled in the word. He wanted them to know the word. He wanted them to have a desire for the word. He wanted them to study the word. You see there in, in Timothy it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Folks, do we know the word? I was, I was, I was at a, a, a drive-in service there recently. 
and uh, a young the, the the minister who was taking it he told a little story and i thought it was very interesting i suppose you'll you'll be saying i could learn a lot from it but he told me he says he, he told us all there that day that that a young fellow went down to sunday school to see the kids and he was he was chatting to all the ones in sunday school and this young fella came up and he says he says uh, he said you know he said he said your reverence he said could could you tell me what Christianity is in three minutes. And he thought for himself, boys or boys, he says, I wonder could I could I really tell him? And he thought for himself, he says, Well, if you give me a wee bit of time to think about it, he says, Yes, I could. I could tell you what Christianity is about in three minutes. The young fellow looked at him and smiled. He says, Well, what takes you half an hour every Sunday morning? And folks, isn't that very true? But the reality is, folks, can you do it in three minutes? Do you really know it? Can you live it out? Some people are terrified of, 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 of folks, I suppose, of folks coming to ask them questions because they don't know the word. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to know everything. But I'm saying we have to have a desire to grow, to study the word, to get into the word, and to know the word so that we can share it with others. And that's what he was saying here, Paul. He wanted people to be settled in the word, to know the word, so that they wouldn't be taken away by every fancy. You know, there's people who come in and tell you something. If you don't know the word or be able to stand upon the word, you'll be taken away. The scripture says you'll be tossed to and fro like the waves because that's what people do. The ravening wolves will come in and devour because that's what they do. But we're settled in the word. And then secondly, we looked at involved in the work. In every good word and work. You know, this is not the tremendous challenge to our hearts tonight. To, to be simply involved in the work of God. And folks, when we're established in the word. And we're established in the work. Folks, that's solid ground. And folks, it's a great encouragement to me to see people coming to the church but it's a greater encouragement to see a hunger for the word and to see them wanting to be involved in the work of God. You know, the, the hymn writer said, room for pleasure, room for business, but for Christ the crucified. Some people have no room, but sometimes as Christians, we've no room for to be involved in the work of God. But the reality is we should be involved. And we should be doing. Didn't the Lord Jesus say, I must be about my father's business because he wanted to do something for the Lord. Is that your desire and my desire? I must be about my father's business. I want to do something for the Lord. And you know, that's the truth and that's the reality. The last little thought here in 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 3 Paul wanted them to be kept free from evil. He wanted them to be kept free from sin in their lives and to set them on the right path. And folks, it's an important to be kept free from evil and sin. As the, as the hymn writer said, with not a cloud between. Folks, to be, there be no sin within the heart or within the life. To, to, to not let evil affect or to, or to damage our, our witness or to damage our work or to, or to damage our, 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 our witness before God. He says, but the Lord is faithful there in 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 3. Who shall establish you and keep you from all evil. And that's what the Lord, the Lord is faithful. Isn't it good? We're able to sing that hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father, because he is faithful. And he wants to establish you, he wants to set you up, he wants to settle you and keep you from evil. He doesn't want your life to be tarnished by evil because that's exactly what he does. The scripture says the devil wants to wreck and ruin and destroy. But what does God want? He wants to give us life. But he wants to give us an abundant life. He wants us to give us a life that is full of joy. He wants to give us a life that's worth living. He wants to give us a life that is real and that is true. You see, some people, I heard a boy testifying one night many years ago over in, in Scotland. And he said, my life was a sham. And sometimes even as Christians, you can, you can mock your life up as a sham, can't you? 
You see, what he wants to give us is a life that is real. And he wants to keep us from evil. And folks, can I say it is God who establishes. It's God who sets us up. It is God who settles us. But can I say he uses his people to accomplish his work. You see, my great joy is to get into the word of God. I love the word. My great joy is to study the word. I'm not a student in the word. There's very little I know about it. You know, sometimes I'm ashamed for for my lack of knowledge in the word. But you know, I have a love for the word of God. I love the word. And folks, that God has called me to pastor in the word. Woe unto me, the scripture said, that's what Paul said, if I preach not the gospel. Woe unto me if I pastor not the flock, because you stand before God and you'll give an account. And folks, for those who take up the scriptures, there's a responsibility with taking up the scriptures. And folks, he uses his people to accomplish his work. That's the wonderful God that we know and love and serve. And we need to be those who are able to establish young believers. And can I say that's the greatest challenge to to you and to me today. Because the reality, the reality of establishing young believers is important. You see, individually discipling, can I say, of believers is an important part of of church life. Like we we love the Bible study, we love the prayer meeting, we, we love ministry meetings, getting in under the word, they're all good. But you see, the most important people I believe in though is, is those who get alongside others. Those who help others. Those who take them under their wing and look after them and help disciple them. And Paul encouraged the, the Thessalonican believers on a one-to-one basis. Because that's what Paul did himself. And folks, Paul left an example because he wanted to get along the, beside them one-to-one and to teach them. And that's a tremendous ministry. You see, Paul was concerned about two aspects of Christian life. Their word, what they were saying for the Lord. And their work, what they were doing for the Lord. And folks, can I say, if our walk contradicts our word, then we really lose our testimony. You know, if you're not living out what you're saying, you're contradicting your own testimony. And the reality is, we're more like the hypocrites. And the Lord Jesus Christ condemned the hypocrites. Folks, he didn't want anything to do with them. He didn't want to see people. He wanted to see people not only knowing him personally, but he wanted to see them living for him. And he wanted to see them involved in his work. You see, good works and good works, they come from a yielded heart. A heart that is given over. And I wonder tonight, folks, is your heart given over? We need to be established in our words and in our work. We need to guard the truth and we live out the truth daily. There in 1 John 3 and verse 18 it says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. May I just close with this little quotation that, that I read recently. And I believe one of the best ways to guard the truth is to practice the truth. And this is what one of the commentaries said in one of the commentaries I was reading. It is good to be defenders of the faith. But we must never forget to be demonstrators of the faith. Let me say that again. It is good to be defenders of the faith. But we must never forget to be demonstrators of the faith. We defend it. And folks, the majority of people go into that category. They'll they'll defend the faith to the end. But yet sometimes they forget to demonstrate it out. May we be not only defenders of the faith, but may we be demonstrators of the faith in these days. Amen. And we trust God will bless his precious word uh, to our hearts. And that it will be a help and certainly an encouragement uh, to you in the days we're living in. Folks, let's go down to prayer and I trust in your own homes you'll be able to spend time in prayer 
and uh, we bring these things before God. There's much to pray for. Uh, do remember uh, Sunday service coming up, but I also ask you to uh, remember uh, the Easter Sunday uh, drive-in service. Uh, it's something new for us. I uh, took part in many drive-in services, but I can't remember ever having uh, a drive-in service here in Rafo or doing one. Uh, so I would appreciate prayer for that. Uh, pray for those who take part. Uh, we haven't finalised everything yet, but God willing we will do. And uh, pray for those who have a part to play, uh, that God will bless them and that God will uh, greatly use them uh, there in uh, the open air. So please do uh, remember that, especially the Sunday services, and remember uh, especially Easter Sunday, that's the 4th of April, and God willing, we'll have a tremendous time together uh, before the Lord. Uh, do pray for uh, protection for each and every one. Uh, this COVID is dragging on, let's keep going. And uh, pray for uh, protection upon many people right over the world. There's some uh, tremendous sad situations we're hearing of. Uh, some places are closing up again, some are opening up. Uh, everybody's at different stages, but it's, it's not an easy time. And uh, please do remember right across the world, uh, remember the church family um, and remember every church family. We're not only thinking insular, uh, but we're thinking right across the board. And do remember our own family circles and remember our neighbours and friends and, and pray for very much for opportunities to speak to people in these days that hearts and lives will open up to the gospel and that many will be saved. Uh, as I often say, do pray for church work, pray for missionary work, pray for the furtherance of the gospel. Uh, there's much going out online, uh, there's open airs, there's drive-ins, there's track distribution. So it's great to see the word of God going out and even over Zoom and, and other aspects where it's able to go out. And uh, tremendous opportunities in these days in a different way. We've had to uh, look at things differently. And it's not always easy for the church uh, to change and to a kind of a metamorphosis in a completely different way. Uh, there's things happening now which we never thought ever would happen. And especially, uh, you know, with, with online services, you're preaching to a camera, it's completely different. And I, I would love to have people back, so please do uh, remember that and remember all uh, missionary work. Uh, especially uh, pray for a, a move of God in our land as well uh, that not only in our own land here but right across uh, the world as a whole pray that God will come and God will move we do need God to move in revival and I don't mean that in a flippant way in these days uh, pray for uh, God's movement and pray that people will will turn back again to the living God. Many times you read in the scriptures of Israel turning away and God dealt with them and God spoke to them and there, there was a turning back. And uh, we pray that in these days that people will realize that their need of God. I remember singing in Bible college years ago that there was, there was a, a, I suppose, a peace to choir song and it simply was entitled People Need the Lord. And it's the very same message today that we preach. And let's pray that people will not only hear but that lives, hearts and lives will be changed uh, very much. So if there's other things to pray for, maybe you know of folks who are unwell. Uh, I know that many people share with me, but it's very difficult for me to say out names unless people ask me to do that. Uh, but you maybe know of people and situations, you can bring them before the Lord different needs uh, in these days as well, in your own uh, time. At home. So let's pray together. Our loving and our gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you that we can come before you in prayer tonight. We thank you for these times that we've been able to meet around your word. We thank you for the practicality of your word. We thank you. It's, it's a living word. It's a relevant word. And we pray we take that word and we apply it to our hearts and lives. May we not only be hearers of the word, but we want to be doers also. May we be those who the challenge came tonight. May we be involved in your work. 
work. Lord, these are difficult days for us. We're doing different things. We're doing new things. But Lord, we're looking to you. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will lead and guide and that you will wonderfully direct in every single way. Lord, we thank you that we can remember the church family as a whole. We remember every church family. And we pray, O oh Lord, that as, as, as the days go past, Lord, they will be encouraged in yourself we pray lord you'll keep us together and lord we know that many are saying in these days oh will the church be empty but lord we thank you we come to worship a true and living god and we pray lord even in the coming days when the churches are able to open we pray lord we'll see many new faces we'll see different faces we'll see the, the familiar faces but lord we'll see people coming in with the desire to meet with the living God. We thank you, Lord, in these days for, for those involved in missionary work. We know it's difficult for them too. And we pray, Lord, for them in a, in a practical sense, in a financial sense, in a, in, a, in a sense of how they get out the gospel message. Lord, that you will lead, you will guide and you will wonderfully direct. We do pray for all the needs of different folks. We may, we, we've been looking there on Sunday at, 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 at Elijah going through a difficult time in our lives, and we know there's maybe those who we know and we pray for who, who are going through difficult times. They have needs, and we pray for them tonight. Lord, those that are upon our hearts, Lord, we maybe can't mention them, but Lord, you know them, and you know them inside out. And we pray, Lord, you'll meet them at the point of their need. You'll meet their difficulties. You'll meet their trials. You'll meet their tribulations. And you'll deal with them in a wonderful way, we do pray. We realize this COVID is, is coming and going. Lord, there's so much saying it can come back and it can go. But we do pray against it. And Lord, we do pray, Lord, that the, 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 this whole COVID will be restricted. It'll be stopped. We pray for the giving out of the vaccine. Lord, that the difficulties and the problems will be, will be overrun. And Lord, that the, the vaccine will be handed out. Lord, what we want to do is get back to the place where we can fellowship and worship together. What we want to do is get back to the time we can have fellowship even outside the church together. And Lord, it was, it, it's, it's in your timing, it's in your doing. We know that there's nothing too hard for our God. So Lord, we look to you tonight. There's much more that we can pray for. So as we go down to prayer in our own homes, we pray, Lord, that you will lead, that you will guide, that you will wonderfully direct, that you will have your own wonderful way amongst us because we ask it all in your lovely name. Lead us on now, we pray, because we ask it in that name, the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.